So um, I don't think we understand fully what all the causes of cruciate disease are, uh, cruciate disease are but um, it's slightly different to um, the kind of pathogenesis or the cause of it in humans in that that tends to be pretty much always traumatic, whereas in dogs we think there's a genetic and degenerative element to it as well. Um, but certainly it does tend to be that when we have that acute onset of lameness, that we associate with um, cruciate ligament rupture, um, that we do, um, there has been like a preceding trauma. So whether that's like chasing a cat or running after a ball or um, putting a foot down a hole or something, there tends to be that final kind of straw that breaks the camel's back. Yeah. Um, and we, definitely... we have that all the time. I would say at least, 50 to 75 percent of the cases that come in with cruciate um, damage not not necessarily full rupture but maybe partial rupture the owner really does believe it's an acute injury that there's no preceding signs um yeah. the other horrible condition that i have to mention not because i'm trying to generate fear but i'm trying to make people take you know be observant is osteosarcomas people come in with an acute destabilization no they, they really didn't see it coming and there's been a bone tumor that has just gone and it's a bit the same with the cruciate it it degenerates and then goes yeah so yeah that's exactly what i see in practice yeah and i think that often there might be a partial rupture beforehand but dogs can compensate pretty well and manage to kind of hide those for a while if you're not really looking out for them yeah. So we, I would say, I don't, I don't have any research to back this up, but I suspect that the majority of partial cruciate injuries don't get picked up and we don't see them until they become that really acute lameness. And then when the cruciate is completely ruptured or more than 50% of the fibres, the dog then really cannot stabilise when that foot is in stance. So when they are weight-bearing, they cannot manage that glide. And I, I saw a, a paper that looked at video fluoroscopy of how much movement is happening in the stifle and it can translate by 9.7 millimeters or something, which wow. is horrible. Um, and in so as the as the limb is coming through swing, the dog hyperflexes to try and stabilize it whilst it's in the air. But when it's in stance, it just can't manage that instability. And that's when it's getting that glide and causing that inflammation and pain um, and that's why often you'll see that really short stride you'll probably see quite a lot of rotation while the foot's on the floor and um, then in particularly sore cases they're non-weight bearing.